I'm a big fan of Asian buns, so I think this is a good opportunity to learn about the different types of them together. So according to my half-assed research, there are three general kinds of dishes in Asian cuisine that kind of looks like this. Dumplings, buns, and bao. A bun means a solid piece of dough. It's just bread. It could be steamed, baked, or fried. Bao's and dumplings have fillings. They're basically just little pockets of meat. The difference lies in the wrapper. A dumpling is always wrapped with a unleavened dough, and it's usually really thin. This category includes your popular dishes like wontons, hot stickers, steamed dumplings, boiled dumplings, and fried dumplings. And gyoza is just the pronunciation of dumplings in Japanese. It's also the name of this character. The word bao literally means wrapped in Chinese. It's always made with a leavened dough with yeast, resulting in a thicker and a softer product. The name infer that the meat needs to be completely wrapped, which is also a good rule to live by in and out of the kitchen. <laughs> Today we're gonna follow along the most famous Chinese cooking channel, Sister Gao's magic ingredients. The tutorial is fully in Mandarin, but don't worry, I'm an expert on all languages, as you already know. 大家好,我是小高姐,今天我们来做煎包。我用的是非常软的面团,当然你可以用硬一些的面团。we're starting with 300 grams of all-purpose flour. 不过软面团有很多好处,等一下你就看到了。she said the dough is gonna be really wet, so if you're a beginner, put less water in it. But I have nothing to worry since my hand is incapable of making anything wet. Half a teaspoon of active dry yeast. Silent eighth of a teaspoon of salt. So the water to flour ratio is 75%. The more water, the softer the end product. Among all the doughs we've made on this channel, this has got to be the most annoying one. It's so sticky and clingy, like how I act in a relationship. Jeez, okay. 15分钟之后, once it's roughly a dough or rest it for 15 minutes. And I guess it's a stupid idea to use my left hand to clean off sticky dough from my right. Because you end up with both hands covered in dough. But I guess you knew that already. This is super annoying. So after 15 minutes of resting, the dough should be much easier to work with. But just in case, we're going to put a little bit of oil on our hands so we can do the stretch and fold like she did in the video. It looks simple enough. Let's give it a try. What the fuck? Well, without pulling it so hard, we'll fold it just a little bit for about 2 to 3 minutes. 试问下,再次醒面一个小时就可以用,或者呢,放到冰箱里醒面两个小时到二十四个小时都可以。Once the dough is nice and pliable, just like this right here, we'll put it in a greased bowl, cover, and rest it in room temperature for one hour. 馅料,九个鸡腿,冲洗干净。We used up all our drumsticks for the butter chicken video, so we're just gonna use Trader Joe's ground pork. You can use any type of meat you want, we're wrapping it later, so you don't have to worry about it as much. And we're gonna skip her video all the way to the seasoning part. Starting with 100 grams of chicken broth, and I just remembered last week I learned the correct way of pouring these things. You have to hold it with the opening away from the bowl so the flow doesn't get clogged. A tablespoon of soy sauce. So she said the best substitute for Maggi seasoning is fish sauce. So it's safe to assume that Maggi seasoning is made of urine. A teaspoon of dark soy sauce for the color. Tablespoon of sesame oil. White pepper. I don't have Chinese five spice, so I'm gonna use a little bit of cinnamon in it. Before you judge me, just know that cinnamon is one of the five spices. And finally, a little bit of salt. Now we'll add the seasoning into the ground meat. It looks a little too watery, so I'm gonna pour some of it out. 
much better and this is looking like a nice double shot of espresso i'm gonna serve it to my roommate later should i film the reaction or will that turn this into a prank channel We'll add a little bit of ginger paste from this jar. This is the worst ginger paste I've ever bought. It tastes straight up like chemicals. Chopped up green onions. And finally, just to bind everything together, a tablespoon of flour. After mixing, we're going to put it back in the fridge, help it solidify, and makes it easier to wrap later. That looks so satisfying. Let's try it ourselves too. I'm sure it's slowly but surely taking its time to fall off. Didn't move at all. We're gonna have to pull it hard. Fold it into a cylinder. And then cut the rod into smaller pieces. So apparently a wetter dough gives you the advantage of not needing a rolling pin when you wrap it. Alright, all you need to do is flatten it a little bit, put a decent amount of filling on top of the wrapper, and then uh, come take a closer look. So we're going to start with one corner and fold it together, and then while turning it, we're going to pull and pinch bit by bit till we make a full circle around the bun. And while I'm doing all that, look at my other hand is pushing down the filling so that it doesn't spill over. The best part of a soft dough is that you can pull it as much as you want and it won't break. So just like me, you can stuff as much meat in it as possible and it's gonna take it like a champ. Now that we've made full circle, we're gonna give it a couple more final pinches just to seal everything together. It doesn't look perfect, but now we know how to wrap a bow. As you can tell already from the movements of my finger, this ain't my first time. I'm so proud of myself. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. And just in case you guys accuse me of only making one and buying the rest from the store, I'm gonna give you a time lapse proving that I made every single one. After about 45 minutes of hard work, we have these beautiful, evenly sized balls. We'll take out a large pan and just like my roommate's favorite activity, we'll oil up the bottom. And then we'll evenly space out four of our best looking ones. And a quarter cup of water. We're gonna cover it with a lid, put it on the stove and heat it on medium low. My lid is not transparent, so we can't observe the cooking process. So we kind of just have to have faith in it. You can also say a little prayer to enhance the experience. So basically, as the water evaporates, it's gonna steam the top of the buns, and the oil left on the bottom is gonna sear it and make it nice and crispy. What a genius cooking method. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Right now you can hear that the water is pretty much gone and it's starting to sear. Once it sounds like it's searing, we'll wait for three minutes, and now the moment of truth. Nice job, team. Maybe they're a little too big. We'll flip a couple over to make it look nice and top it off with some sesame seeds and scallion. I'm actually pretty surprised that everything held its structural integrity. I think it's a little flatter than I want them to be, but whenever I see stuff like this, I just feel like I need to have a chopstick fight with a panda. But as always, we gotta check with Instagram. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass it like Stockton. Just Josh. I'm spending this holiday locked in. My body got rid of them toxins. Sports in the top 10. I can put the box. 
let's give it a sound check. Dink it, sync it, and rate it 1 through 10. Very pleasantly pleased. I think this is one of the more difficult recipes we've attempted on this channel. The top steam part is light and airy, and the bottom is thin and crispy. Combined with the juicy filling, it really completes the dish. Every bite you take has such diverse textures and flavors, it's really addicting. The dipping sauce I'm using here is super simple, just soy sauce, vinegar, and some chili oil. I didn't do a perfect execution, but I'm gonna give this recipe a 9.5 out of 10. It's like a perfect burger without the messiness. I think you should give it a try. It's pretty simple, it just takes a lot of work. Oh, by the way, I'm always open to recipe suggestions in the comments, so let me know. Alright, thank you.